All right, fire team, listen up. Welcome to episode eight of The Great Journey. Today I'm gonna to join the conversation with my thoughts and criticisms of Halo Infinite's free and very fun multiplayer game. If you'd like to join the conversation, do so in the comments below and be heard. I typically heart and respond to every comment. Let's start with some of the negative criticisms that I've heard and actually agree with. Theater mode needs some work. Custom games too, definitely. Sometimes there will be no video in theater mode to watch. Other times it works pretty great. <laughs> so the inconsistency is definitely something they need to work on. Custom games also needs work, particularly in the customization portion, which is crazy because that's actually in the name of the mode. So get on it, 343. And it also needs help starting a match or two without playing hot potato with who the fire team leader actually is. Beyond those, my biggest criticism is definitely the lack of playlists and actually choosing a game mode. If nothing else, choosing a game mode would at least help with challenges, which is the only time I'd probably even use it. I actually really dig the random game modes, but I would like the option to choose a specific mode four or five times in a row to complete a challenge, then go back to the random matches. During the game the other night, I activated a double XP boost, which luckily now lasts an hour instead of the initial 30 minutes that 343 gave us. In that hour, I got disconnected and lost about five minutes logging back in. Then two separate rounds took nearly eight minutes each to load and start, effectively eating up nearly half of that XP boost time. Also the mode I needed most in order to complete my challenge was capture the flag, which I didn't even get in that hour, coincidentally in quotation marks, until the match after my double XP expired. So beyond turning 50 XP per game into 100 XP, I pretty much wasted that double XP chip since I never got thrown into a CTF match and I couldn't get a custom CTF match to even work which I don't even know if that would have counted towards the challenge, to be honest. Luckily, some Rockstar cans I purchased and gave to my coworkers to drink for me had codes on them that helped me replenish my wasted XP boosts. Yeah, I admit, I'm often duped by advertisement. I own Pringles Halo cans and all of the Series 1 Jazzware toys that came with codes as well. I'm a Halo addict. But loving something doesn't mean it's bulletproof to criticisms. I've seen a lot of people tearing into the progression system, the battle pass content, and the microtransactions. I don't mind the microtransactions, seriously. What I will agree to is that I wish some of the bundles that cost seven to 800 credits actually only cost 500 credits, and that would make it an even $5 purchase. I know why 343 doesn't do that, but that's part of why I feel it's kind of scummy. Because of the denominations that the credits come in, if things were just 500 credits at those bundles, you wouldn't have to buy you know, 1,000 credits and then have a few left over. So again, obviously that's the purpose. They want you to have left over so that you'll be a couple hundred short of the next thing you want to buy and it'll keep you buying stuff. But that's where I think these things kind of get scummy. Like I just said, I wish everything was just even along the denominations of what you can purchase. So 500 credits, 1,000, you know, 1,500 credits, 2,000 credits, 2,200 credits, whatever it is. I wish they were in those denominations to buy stuff and, uh, and not these other ones that are kind of oddballs out. Everything sold is simply a cosmetic. It's a want and not a need. So it should be a bit more affordable, and if it comes with a weapon, vehicle, or armor shader, I don't see why it can't be used on every weapon, every vehicle, or every armor core. Not doing that just doesn't make any sense on any level, except, as I said before, on a scummy, devious level. Going back to the want instead of a need, I saw a few YouTubers who practically rake in more than a few hundred dollars per video crying and whining that it cost over a thousand dollars to buy all the cosmetics in the game with a future update that's coming apparently i guess it's a rumor in many of these videos a non-traversy seems to be forming over the cost of everything combined but i doubt anyone outside of a few rich halo fans will buy everything and if you do overspend on cosmetics then maybe look internally and realize you have a collecting problem i know i do but i have to keep it in check and yes, I agree that it's silly to sell shaders for more than $5 or armors for $20, but I also feel that it's silly to try to buy them all too. For me, I love the Halo Reach characters, so I spent around $36 to get 4,400 credits so that I could buy the premium battle pass and have the chance to unlock the Reach kits a bit faster since I don't always have time to play the game. And spending $36 on something that I've had this much fun playing isn't some awful business practice on 343's part in my eyes anyway. Yeah, they need to work on some things for sure, but even with my minimum wage job income, $36 on a fun game that I've put around 25 to 30 hours in 
is pretty fair to me. I understand players want to put one shoulder pad on their left arm and a different one on their right, and maybe a samurai helmet for their Mark 7 and a shader that can go on any armor, and they were promised that in many ways, and are even egregiously taunted by it with the bots who can now mix and match armor when us players currently cannot. So I get the genuine frustration. It's a valid point and I hope 343 and Microsoft will fix it sooner than later. But I want it now, man. They need to fix it now. Halo 3 had this at launch, and Reach had that. Why can't this game? I'm sure you not only heard this before, but probably even said it before. But still, here it goes. This is a free multiplayer game. Those ones were not. You paid for them alongside a 4-5 to five hour campaign, so naturally those multiplayers came with more things up front when the games first launched. Halo Infinite is hopefully dozens of hours of campaign for $60, and this is a separate free multiplayer where you can play 6 to 7 modes across 10 maps as of the recording of this video, with other modes coming very soon in the near future and alternate modes that arrive during special events. Being free doesn't make it above criticism by any means, so if you have some criticisms, voice it, absolutely. But to me, this game being free does buy my patience with it to see how it evolves over the course of the season. During the two weeks this game has been released, I've had a seizure, my dog Echo has been very sick, and I had to take him to the vet, and my car had the mother of all breakdowns with oil spilling all over the engine and costing nearly $900 to fix. This game has been my stress relief, my escapism, and it's been a damn fun one. I like the modes we have, I like the weapons, I dug the story that they're setting up in the Academy tutorial, which I feel isn't talked about nearly enough. I definitely need more weapon training as my aim is worse than Darkseid Phil's most of the time I play. And while I agree that theater mode and custom games need work and a few of the microtransactions should be cheaper, it has not hampered my enjoyment of what is here and what is working. The last thing I want to talk about, and I have mixed feelings on, is the progression system. I am not finding it to be that big of a deal, but I do agree it can improve in one way. I feel if your team wins the round, you should get 100 XP, and if you lose, you get 50 XP. That way it doesn't feel like everyone is just getting a participation trophy. It rewards players who do better with a bit more, and maybe for each killing spree or more that a player earns in a round, they can get an extra 25 XP for that. But to me, that's it. That's all I would change. The game has been out for 14 days, and as of me recording this, I've played about 9 or 10 of those days, and probably put in about 25 to 30 hours, and currently I'm sitting at level 40. Yes, some of that is from the XP boost that came with the premium battle pass, but I still have 30 of those left over to use. I grind for a bit, then if I get close to a reach character armor kit, I use 10 or 20 XP boosts to get me there so I can see my favorite characters in this new game. When I use that remaining 30 boosts, I'll be close to level 47 or 48 roughly. That means 20 to 22 of my current levels that I earned were from grinding and using double XP intelligently. If I have about 25 hours into the game, that means on average I'm leveling up at least once every hour and some change. And with 150 days to go before the season ends, I have plenty of time to get to level 100. I think some of the people criticizing the progression are just mad that they can't get to level 100 of the battle pass without spending money. But that's the point. You either grind or pay your way to the top. But being level 100 doesn't make you a better player. It just means you paid for a shortcut. That's it. Isn't that what we want? Pay for cosmetics, but not for skill advantages? That way you're not forced into paying for anything if you don't want to, or if you have any level of self-restraint. I've made comic books, worked on movies and TV for most of my adult life. What I know about creating art is that sometimes what people criticize reveals a lot about them. I do this too. We all do. You can learn a lot about me based on my criticisms. For people complaining that the progression system is too slow and that buying all the optional cosmetics will cost hundreds or thousands of dollars, that to me reveals that they are impatient and have a possible collecting or hoarding problem, uh, which again, I can relate to both. I am like that in some ways, but I don't blame McFarland toys because he makes too many toys that I wanna buy. I blame me for wanting them when I know they aren't a necessity. Just like I won't blame 343 and Microsoft because they are selling the Reach armors for $9 in a battle pass. And yes, I feel maybe they can add a few cooler cosmetics to the battle pass and not so many double XP or challenge swaps. But to play devil's advocate, those double XPs and challenge swaps can help you level up faster, which I thought many players wanted to do without spending as much money. So the tools are there if you use them well. 
I don't need the reach armor to play the game, but I do want them. That's a me issue. And since I am having so much fun playing, I think a $9 contribution to the game, to the people who made it, while also getting a chance to earn that armor that I love so much in return, is a very fair deal. I buy what I can because I like supporting the people who make the things I love. But in reality, my finances, my health, food, gas, bills, my dog Echo, those are my top priorities. Those get paid first, and I figure out what and who I can support after. I love Halo. Many of you don't know my story, so for those who don't, I survived a brain aneurysm back in 2010. I played video games like Halo Reach to improve my reaction time, my hand-eye coordination, and my problem-solving skills after my body and mind slowed down incredibly. I quite literally rebuilt myself through physical therapy, speech therapy, comics, and video games. But loving Halo as much as I do doesn't make it bulletproof to criticism. I think as long as we share our opinions and voice what works or doesn't work for us personally without letting others tell us what to be mad about or what to be happy about, then a conversation can be had and a fair middle ground can be achieved. So please, join the conversation in the comments. Do you agree with me? Disagree with me? Whatever it is, share it and be heard, Spartan. Thanks for watching this episode about my thoughts on the first two weeks of Halo Infinite's multiplayer. In the next episode, I will discuss my thoughts on the Fracture Tenrai event. Subscribe to the channel if you'd like to join us in that conversation. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all in the future. Feet first, into hell.